Hello and welcome to Five Ways VISTA Leaders Support Members and Projects. This webinar is a special offering for both VISTA members, VISTA leaders, and supervisors, and we're delighted to see so much interest in this topic. I'm your host, Eric Powell, Training Specialist with AmeriCorps VISTA. Our presenter is Andy King, Senior Training Specialist for AmeriCorps VISTA. Andy works closely with VISTA leaders, not only through his monthly webinar series, but also through his work on the VISTA leader orientation and the VISTA campus. Prior to joining VISTA, he was a trainer and consultant in the volunteer management arena. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Eric. I'm excited to have this opportunity to be here to talk about one of my favorite subjects, how VISTA leaders can best support their members and projects. During this webinar, we will be hearing from four guest speakers, two VISTA supervisors from two different projects and the VISTA leaders that they work closely with. We have Claire Healy and Hannah Kim from Sur Philadelphia, and Lucio Perez and Mary Sherman from Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania. You'll be hearing from them in just a bit. So now let me turn things back over to Andy. Thanks, Eric. As I said, I'm excited to uh, see so many leaders and supervisors um, are interested in this topic. It's one of my passions. Um, and some of you may be leaders who want to um, get some clarity around your role, and I'm guessing there are some of you here who are supervisors who may be looking for new ways that you can engage your VISTA leader. Um, and I'm guessing, too, there may even be some supervisors who don't yet have a leader and are wondering what a leader might bring to the project. Well, whatever it is that brought you, uh, I'm glad you're tuning in. And I encourage you to consider uh, uh, with your colleagues after the session, um, confer and sort of compare notes on how a VISTA leader can best support members at your project. So what are we going to cover today? Let's take a look at our session outcomes. First, we'll look at appropriate ways that VISTA leaders can support their members and their project in five different areas. Next, we'll examine some tasks that fall outside the scope of VISTA leaders and are reserved for VISTA supervisors. And finally, you'll have the chance to hear specific examples from your peers and from our guest speakers that may offer you some new ways that leaders can be involved in your project. We'll set the stage by first talking about a couple of things that need to underpin the VISTA leader position. First of all, it's essential that a VISTA leader has an effective working relationship with their supervisor, who is often the overall project director. As you'll see, when leaders and supervisors work in sync with each other, things work out really well. The other thing that's important for leader success is clarity around the leader's role, so that everyone from the project director to site supervisors, the VISTA members, and even the leader themselves have the same expectations. And I hope that this webinar can provide some of that clarity. One other thing I'll mention is uh, if you're with a project that does not have a VISTA leader and you're wondering, could we have one? How does that work? Uh, so VISTA leaders um, can be assigned to VISTA projects that have six or more VISTA members. And the process for that would be to contact your portfolio manager at the AmeriCorps Regional Office. And as part of your uh, project application or a continuation application, you can include um, the request for a VISTA leader. All right, so um, in our quest for clarity about what a leader role includes, uh, let's first talk about a few things that it does not include. So first, leaders are not employees of the sponsoring organization, right? You know that. Um, but therefore, that means that they cannot make decisions on behalf of the organization or obligate the organization in any way. <clears throat> so that means they can't accept grants or sign contracts on behalf of the sponsor. 
Those, of course, would be staff responsibilities. Next, leaders are not supervisors. They cannot hire, fire, direct manage, supervise, discipline, dismiss, a VISTA, nor can they assign work, alter a VAD, or approve leave requests. Uh, likewise, they cannot submit reports to AmeriCorps. All those things are the responsibility of the VISTA supervisor. And finally, leaders are not super VISTAs. They should have one VAD that's focused on supporting their members and the project. <clears throat> leaders should not have two VADs, that is two assignment descriptions, or have a set of VISTA member responsibilities on top of their leader roles. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's look at five areas where VISTA leaders provide support. As we look at each, I hope I can clarify which tasks leaders should focus on and point out ones that are beyond their scope. So these are the five areas. First is recruitment of VISTA members to support your team and the project organization. Second is supporting members throughout their year of service. Next is developing members professionally so they can meet their VAD goals and the project goals overall. Project reporting. And finally, project sustainability activities that you can support for your members and for the project. So first let's look at recruitment. VISTA leaders play an essential role in recruiting VISTA members for their organization, sponsors, and project. Let's drill down specifically on the tasks that leaders can take on. First, leaders can draft opportunity listings for supervisor approval and for posting in eGrants. These would be based on the approved VAD for the position. The VISTA campus has some resources on how to write a service opportunity listing, and we've listed uh, that resource um, on the handout that you can download for this session. Next, leaders typically have a role in marketing open VISTA positions, often by creating and then implementing a marketing plan. These days it can be harder to find ready audiences so it may be challenging to figure out where you might find potential VISTAs and get the word out to them. Leaders, though, are usually pretty well positioned to see quickly which efforts work and which ones don't, so they can update the marketing plan to make it more effective for the next recruitment cycle. Also, leaders can have an important role in identifying applicants who are already in AmeriCorps but who haven't applied to your position, but they do have skills and interests that align with it. The leader can reach out to them and invite them to apply. Another appropriate role for leaders is to monitor the recruitment work basket, acknowledging applications as they come in, and performing a preliminary screening review. It's appropriate for leaders to provide applicants with more information about the role and answer their questions. In many cases, the leader is the first contact an applicant has with the sponsoring organization, so this is where their ambassador role comes into play. And finally, leaders play an important role in coordinating the interview process. This means they can review applications with an eye toward identifying applicants that they would recommend to the supervisor to be interviewed. Once the supervisor has approved a list of applicants to interview, the leader can set up the interview team, schedule interviews and participate in them, and then share their observations with the supervisor who will ultimately make the decision and then act on it in eGrants. All right, uh, Eric, uh, I'm curious if there are other ways that leaders are supporting recruitment beyond what I've mentioned here. That's a great question, Andy. And I'd recommend let's putting this one out to the group. So we'd like to hear from you now. Go ahead and use the chat panel to respond to the following question. In what other ways do VISTA leaders support recruitment for your project? And again, please make sure everyone can see your response by making sure to toggle 
to all panelists and attendees before submitting your response in the chat. All right, so we've got some great ideas here. Um, hosting info sessions in Zoom for, I guess, applicants or would-be applicants. Um, doing the social media outreach. Uh, doing uh, speaking uh, engagements, making presentations about AmeriCorps to campus and student groups, uh, recruitment and outreach events. Uh, yeah, similar classroom presentations, contacting professors at universities. Yeah, it looks like a lot of outreach activities here, a lot of it um, college focused, university focused. Ah, here's a here's one speaking with current vistas about other opportunities. So getting them to sign up for another year of service. Great idea. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. Uh, drafting a, a vista FAQ, sort of a benefit fact sheet for interviews. Creating interview outlines and questions. Uh, reaching out to prior applicants about upcoming positions and referring to additional positions in the project or locally. Yeah, so you know, if, if uh, individuals have already applied and they've expressed interest, um, it's great to capitalize on that and try to get them the right fit. Uh, let's see, here's another suggestion around uh, creating spreadsheets and workflows to organize their recruitment process and tracking all of it. All right, great ideas, great suggestions. Eric, um, anything else that you noticed? A lot of good responses coming in. The only other one I noticed that I think was worth mentioning in very, very great detail is bridging the communication gap between intermediaries and subsites and having the leader uh, help bridge that recruitment span so that everyone knows what's going on. Great, yeah. Uh, a very good suggestion there about uh, intermediary projects. All right, um, great suggestions, great ideas. Thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead and move ahead, move on. So now let's look at some of the recruitment tasks that really fall outside the scope of what VISTA leaders can do um, and really are the responsibility of supervisors. So first, VISTA leaders don't actually make the decision on which candidates to select. That is done by the supervisor. Similarly, VISTA leaders cannot extend an offer to applicants or notify them uh, that they've been selected uh, to be a VISTA. Likewise, they can't uh, send the rejection notices and tell people they were not selected. Those, of course, um, are supervisor roles. And then finally, I think you probably are all aware only the VISTA supervisor can legally accept or reject applications within eGrants. All right, uh, so let's move on now and look at some other areas where leaders can provide support. Our next category is member support. Um, and member support is often a major part of what a VISTA leader does, part of their daily activities especially when VISTA members first start. This can include orienting uh, them to the work site, connecting them to the right people within the organization and the community, uh, and other helpful service-related information. This is typically the day-to-day -day information that leaders share to keep VISTAs from getting stuck so that they can move forward with their VADs effectively. One big dimension of this is offering support in the personal realm, helping members who relocated, get settled in the community perhaps, um, and assisting all members with making ends meet on the living allowance. 
Uh, I'll mention next month we are offering a webinar for leaders that explores this topic a little more deeply. Next, leaders often manage communications with members about the project. This can include keeping them up to date on what's happening with the organization, the Vista project, upcoming events, um, sending reminders about deadlines, and other useful information. Sometimes it can take the form of a newsletter or other regular communication mode. Generally, leaders are not expected to step in and solve problems for their VISTAs, but sometimes VISTAs need help solving problems that come up for them. And leaders can play uh, an important role in coaching VISTAs through the problem-solving process by things such as exploring the cause of the problem, helping them generate creative solutions, and helping them come up with a plan to address the issue. And finally, VISTA leaders also assist with planning and implementing the VISTA assignment description. This can include helping members manage their time and their tasks, helping them stay on track, assisting with long-term planning, and identifying resources to help them achieve their VAD goals. I want to mention a few member support tasks or activities that are reserved for supervisors. Um, first, only supervisors can approve or deny requests for leave. Uh, next, in the area of Avista's work, the supervisor is the one to do the supervision, right? Uh, to supervise, assign tasks, and delegate work. And finally, the supervisor is the one who's responsible for evaluating or assessing VISTA member performance related to their assignment description. Leaders can certainly talk with VISTAs about tasks that they're struggling with or other challenges that they might be having with the goal of supporting them. But leaders are not the evaluators of mem member performance. All right, so I'm going to pause here so we can bring in some voices from an actual VISTA project so you can see how they're approaching member recruitment and member support at their project. Thanks, Andy. I'm very happy to welcome our guest speakers from SURF Philadelphia, part of the Philadelphia Mayor's Office of Civic Engagement and Volunteer Service. Claire Healy is the program manager for the SURF Philadelphia VISTA Corps in the Mayor's Office of Civic Engagement and Volunteer Service, which this year has over 50 members serving in city government. Claire currently supervises three VISTA leaders and is herself an AmeriCorps VISTA alum. Hannah Kim is a VISTA leader and provides direct support to a team of 16 VISTA members. Prior to being a VISTA leader, she served as an AmeriCorps member at City Year. We're so delighted to have them here to talk about how they distinguish between their roles. So Clara, let's start with you. Awesome, thank you so much, Eric, uh, for that intro. Um, hi everyone, really happy to be here today. Uh, supervising VISTA leaders is one of the best parts of my job. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, and I wanted to touch briefly on creating really good VISTA leader roles and goals, because um, I think that is uh, kind of what this webinar is really talking about. So the first step um, is really understanding what VISTA leaders cannot do, and you're already here um, learning about what they can and cannot do, so that's great. Um, but here are some other uh, major lessons learned I've had over the past few years of supervising VISTA leaders. Uh, the first here is uh, creating a timeline marking all the major events during a VISTA leaders year. Uh, I think this is huge when thinking about some VISTA leaders are coming in um, and having to step into onboarding right away, uh, onboarding new VISTAs, or maybe there's uh, offboarding happening or there are recruitment deadlines, member development things going on. Um, so having that deadline while you're creating roles is really important. Um, the second here is actually involving VISTA leaders in determining those roles and goals. Um, and often what this means is uh, as a supervisor, I kind of balance what uh, leaders need to do uh, with their own interests, goals, and strengths. Uh, and I think this leads to bigger buy-in um, for VISTA leaders in the roles they're doing. 
Um, and the next thing here, we'll talk about more on the next slide, but ensuring that clear division of labor um, and making sure VIS leaders are set up with uh, point people for resources or help. And in our office, we use a mocha, um, which is not in this case a delicious coffee drink. Um, we'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, but finally, I find it really helpful and important to check in often on my VISTA leaders and what they're doing in terms of their VIS leader assignment description. Um, so this is uh, practically done quarterly to check in and see how those things are going. Awesome. Uh, so now we're going to get into the MOCA a bit. Uh, a MOCA is a tool we use from an awesome organization called the Management Center. Um, and they, yeah, link dropped in the chat. Thank you. Um, and a MOCA is really helpful uh, to use on a project when there are a few leaders or even program staff and leaders working together on one project. Um, I think we've all walked away from a meeting at some point saying, wait, what am I supposed to do? Or who's in charge of this? Uh, the MOCA is really there to clear up who is doing what. Um, and Hannah is gonna uh, step in and walk us through that. Thanks, Claire. Um, I saw someone had mentioned MOCA earlier in the chat. Um, we at Serve love MOCA. Mm -hmm. So just a quick overview. Um, so manager is the person who holds the owner accountable and the owner is the one who is responsible for getting the work done. Consultant are um, people the owner might uh, go to for advice, but they don't necessarily contribute uh, work to the project. And helpers are people who do some sort of work for the project. And the approver is the one who signs off on the final decision. Um, so it's okay if some of these roles overlap. Um, it can totally be dependent on the size and uh, size of your staff and who does what. Um, so if it overlaps, that's fine. Um, so for me, I am the owner of our cohorts newsletter. And since Claire is my program manager, she would also be the manager in the MOCA and the approver as well, since she has the final say on what goes and what doesn't go on the newsletter. Um, so for me, I uh, always ask my leadership team, hey, can you look over this and give me some feedback on it? So uh, my co-VISTA leaders and other program staff would be the consultants. And I have a Google form for my newsletter uh, because I really value uh, other people's submissions to the um, newsletter. So they would be considered um, helpers uh, to get the work done. And that is the MOCA. Yeah, so um, for supporting VISTA members, uh, we have uh, two uh, formal uh, ways we support our members, and that would be monthly reports and quarterly check-ins. Um, so for me, these reports are really important because they not only tell me how uh, the VISTA is doing on staying on track with their VAT objectives, but what are their accomplishments? What are their challenges? And how are they feeling about their role? So uh, recently I was reading a couple reports and I had realized a couple of my VISTAs were struggling, um, but um, we had our quarterly, our first quarterly check-in about um, a week or two after that report was submitted. So, um, I had brought the report to our check-in and I wanted to reiterate with my VISTAs, hey, I read your report, um, I'm here to support you. I know sometimes things can be rough. So if there's ever a moment that you feel like you need to do a check-in with me, you are more than welcome to reach out to me um, before your monthly report is due because um, our reports are due on the seventh of every month. So sometimes, um, things are time sensitive and I'm completely understanding of that. So um, I created uh, multiple pathways of communication. So whether that's email, um, DMing me on Teams or GroupMe, um, 
having those different uh, methods of communication is really important. Um, also, uh, something I came to realize was we have our VISTAs for a week for orientation and then we send them off to different project sites. So this can lead to a little bit of managing sideways. Um, so that's why I had to make sure that I had these multiple pathways of communication so that um, my VISTAs know, my VISTAs essentially don't forget about me. So um, there's a bit of a managing sideways with that because you wanna make sure you're not um, over, uh, overstepping uh, with direct supervisors. And just being very explicit with this communication. Um, so there were moments where I was like, I'm available at this time if you want to speak. And with every email I send them, I always make sure at the bottom I put, hey, don't forget, if you need to check in, um, I'm here to do so. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Claire and Hannah, for all those very specific and very helpful insights and ideas. Um, let's shift now and look at our third area of support, and that is member development. Um, so this is when leaders wear their facilitator and educator hat and typically involves them identifying with their VISTA members what their learning and development goals are and then supporting the members to achieve those goals. Most leaders uh, develop and deliver training directly for members on the team, often in conjunction with the project director or the supervisor. This can include the on-site orientation and training, as well as other ongoing uh, trainings. The sponsor, of course, is responsible for developing the on-site orientation and training plan and submitting that to the regional office for review and approval. But once it's been approved, then the leader can be involved in developing the training components uh, like the presentations, the activities, and, and the specific materials. Another way that leaders support member development is by sharing opportunities for professional development, whether those are within the organization or outside. Leaders also provide on-the-job training as the need arises. These are often short sessions, could be virtually or in person, um, to help VISTAs with the information they need when they need it. And finally, leaders can coach VISTAs for better performance. Say you have a VISTA who wants to improve their public speaking ability, the leader can observe the member in a practice session and offer feedback and coaching to help the VISTA improve their performance. And under the same topic of member development, there are just a couple things that are reserved for supervisors. First, only the supervisor can approve or deny requests for outside training. Such requests inv uh, involve approving time away from the office and sometimes involve authorizing payment for the training. Similarly, only the supervisor can assign required training. The leader might help identify a particular need that a member has, but it's up to the supervisor to determine what training, if any, would be required or approved. Okay, so with that quick uh, overview, let me pause again so that we can hear from one of our guest speakers. I'm very happy to welcome our first guest speaker from Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania. Mary Sherman is the VISTA leader serving through the Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania, working to engage higher education and civic service to build community health and resilience. She served as a VISTA at Mercy College through the Campus of Compact of New York and Pennsylvania for the past two years, where she acted as the basic needs coordinator overseeing their campus food and resource pantries. Mary is currently pursuing a Master of Arts in Higher and Post-Secondary Education at Teachers College, Columbia University, and is passionate about promoting equity and justice in the field of higher education. Welcome, Mary. Well, thank you, Eric. I am more than happy to be here. So member development is a guiding pillar at CCNYPA, as it's a way for us to support our VISTAs as they navigate their year of service in an affirming, constructive environment. 
So we devised something called the Power Up Series, which is a programming series throughout the year that focuses on personal, professional, and project development opportunities, such the reason for the three Ps. All of our programs are hosted virtually and any materials are uploaded to a shared resource drive, which can be easily accessed by all of our members. We host developmental workshops in each of the focus areas every month, pulling from our own expertise and recruiting VISTA alum, as well as industry professionals to offer training to our VISTAs. We encourage an open, affirming space so that everyone can feel comfortable asking whatever question comes to mind. For personal development, I actually host a uh, series of wellness workshops that focus on eight dimensions of wellness. And you'll actually have access to my guidebook in the follow-up email afterwards and also in the link that was shared already in the chat box. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about what this looks like, I'd be more than happy to chat. Another program that we've just unveiled is the Experiential Leadership Program, or the ELP, which is a seven-month self-directed asynchronous course that VISTAs may choose to participate in. The goal of the ELP is to nurture their leadership skills of our VISTAs through engaging content, personal reflection, and creative activities. So by joining the ELP, VISTAs have embarked on a journey of self-assessment, professional development, and personal advocacy. The skills that will be cultivated in this program will help them navigate their year of service and beyond. We've also implemented focus groups alongside our regional meetups, which provides an opportunity for VISTAs to discuss, share resources, and offer support to each other as we all navigate this wild ride of year and provide the best services to our communities. Additionally, any outside programs and events that contain relevant information or possibly even a certificate are advertised to our members and directed to those in certain project areas or personal interests. Additionally, I regularly converse with the folks in the cohort, having conversations with them about project challenges and successes, what their hopes and dreams are, and of course, connecting them with VISTA alum, tools and resources to help navigate their year of service. All of these programs are again, accessible on a shared Google calendar, where you can either add the entire calendar or individual events to your work calendar. As all of our VISTAs at very different organizations with different operating systems. We also have a shared Google folder, which acts like a living database of resources for VISTAs to access, download, upload, sideload, and find use of in whatever way they need support. This makes resource sharing a so much easier than sending out individual emails. So when planning these opportunities, we really considered the complications of the pandemic and how we can best provide you know, the most effective opportunities for the members of our cohort. I am um, I'm very reflective of my own two years as a VISTA member at CCNYPA. And you know, truth be told, I'm really not far displaced from where I was in the beginning um, you know, to where I am now. So member development goes hand in hand with member support for me because Feedback in itself is so important in the planning process as well. Um, and you know, we have those conversations, as I mentioned earlier, all the time. And I strive for the promotion of community within this cohort so that we're all in a collaborative learning space. I encourage VISTAs to engage in reflective thinking in all that they do. And you know, I do the same for myself as I really uh, very much deeply value growth and learning. So together we can work to alleviate poverty throughout the nation and fight injustices that have brought such deep rooted inequity. So I leave you with one of my favorite quotes. A leader is a planter, a planter of ideas, seeds of change and a vision for justice. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mary. And I, I love that quote. That was great. I'll have to remember that one, definitely. So we covered a couple more support areas, including member support and member development. And we'd like to hear from you again in the chat about other ways that VISTA leaders can support and develop members. And again, just as a reminder, so that everyone can see your response, please make sure you send your message to all panelists and attendees before submitting. And again, the question is, in what ways do leaders support and develop members that we have not yet talked about? Looks like a lot of people are All right. the answer. 
Uh, let's see. All right. Well, so Kensley uh, says monthly professional development meetings. That is great. Yeah. So I'm guessing the leaders are involved there in um, maybe planning those meetings, figuring out what the topics are, maybe even surveying the members to find out what topics they would be interested in, and then um, setting those up and planning them, leading and guiding. Uh, let's see. Andrea says being a listening ear when everyone is needed. Yeah, that's a, a key role for VISTA leaders. They are close to the members, and so um, often they can be that, that peer listening uh, post. Uh, Rashad says identifying and developing a VISTA's why. So yeah, so helping the VISTA really think about um, their purpose, what it is that they are there to accomplish, helping them remember that. Uh, let's see. Our leaders typically do a great job of informing me, the supervisor, uh, when there may be an issue that does require my involvement or intervention. For example, complaints or conflict with a subsite supervisor. Great. So, thank you, Paul, for that. Um, leaders can, you know, have play a really important role, being the eyes and ears at the sites um, where maybe you, as a project director or a supervisor, can't be everywhere, um, and maybe you wouldn't hear from all the, the members what their particular issues might be. <clears throat> uh, let's see, there are more coming in. I see one or two that mentioned being emotionally available as a support network and just really being available to listen but also provide guidance as needed. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, terrific. Um, yeah, help, uh, Catherine, uh, helping to make sure that each member has their individual development plan updated, identifying the training needs of members, and having guest speakers throughout the service here. Uh, talking about challenges and the successes of service experience. Uh, benefits. Yeah, thank you, Andy, for that. Um, helping members navigate and understand what their AmeriCorps benefits are. Uh, Emily, noticing who may need extra attention or support. So, yeah, keeping your eye on the VISTAs, and, and even if they're not coming forward to ask for help, um, paying attention to see maybe where it's needed. Uh, doing check ins. Uh, targeting professional and personal goals, uh, navigating the work-life balance, and planning for life after VISTA. Oh yeah, lots of great ideas. Thank you for those, Shamisha. Yeah, a couple of you are talking about uh, conflict management and helping sort out for members and helping them to um, gain some clarity in situations where they're feeling stuck. Um, creating opportunities for input uh, from the members and helping to get that so it gets put to use. Uh, and let's see, ah, monthly reporting, providing a better explanation of what it is, why it's required, why it's needed, how the information gets used. All of that. Yeah, great great idea, Cheryl. Um, if people know why they're doing something, they're much more likely to do it and know the importance of it. Um, and let's see, the last one I can see from Sean, uh, keeping this as up to date and informed about current projects of other VISTAs so that they're aware of potential areas for collaboration. Great ideas all. Thank you. Okay, well, if you have others, feel free to post them there. But let's go ahead and move on. And we'll take a look at the fourth way that leaders can support their projects. And that area is reporting. So in general, leaders play what I would call a supporting role in the reporting function. Um, and there are several things that that can include. Leaders often support supervisors by reminding members of when it's time to complete their timesheets, which we consider a report. Um, of course, each sponsor um, has their own system for tracking member time and leave usage.
but the leader role is to make sure that members know how and when to do it. Virtually all VISTA members have a role in reporting on their service activities and their accomplishments. Um, and typically, the member orientation includes what kind of data they should be collecting and submitting and when it is due. The VISTA leader might take on the task of reminding members to submit their reports on time, which can cut down on them being late. Also, leaders can review reports that the members submit, making sure that everything is clear and complete, and following up if there are issues with what's been submitted. To do this, you'll need to build some time into the, uh, the timeline so that uh, when the members uh, submit their, um, their reports, that the leader then has time to review it before it's due to the supervisor. And finally, after gathering and reviewing member report uh, data, the leader can compile and share it with the project director or the supervisor, who then writes and submits the official reports to AmeriCorps. This work of gathering and grooming the report data so it's ready for the project director can have a, a huge effect in producing higher quality reports. And on the flip side are the pieces that are the responsibility of the sponsoring agency or the site supervisor. And this includes signing off on timesheets and leave requests, submitting the sponsor verification form and e-grants, writing the semi-annual or annual reports for AmeriCorps, and submitting those reports and e-grants. These are all legal responsibilities of the sponsor and the project director or supervisors are the ones who carry it out. Okay, I'm going to pause again so you can hear from the last of our guest speakers. I'm now happy to welcome Lucio Perez from Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania. Lucio is the Senior Program Manager of Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania, and he oversees the VISTA program there. Lucio happily served as a VISTA member from 2014 to 2016, working towards post-secondary education access in central Pennsylvania, and is, and is excited to continue the mission of AmeriCorps through his work as project director. Lucio, how do you and Mary approach your roles related to reporting? Hi, thanks, Eric. So Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania serves as an intermediary that manages close to 30 VISTA projects in the two states. So as you can imagine, having a strong infrastructure towards the collecting, analyzing, and reporting of our members is totally vital. The initial months of service, we provide individualized Excel forms to our members that outlines the data that's going to be collected in the coming months. Uh, for reporting, such as member development information, the hours that's going to be collected at on-site orientation, community outreach, community volunteers, and other tracking mechanisms. More specifically, the individualized forms provide a reference point uh, for the project's performance and focus area measures as a means to gauge program development, the sustainability path, uh, capacity building opportunities, the reference tool is a great resource for us because it allows both the site supervisors and the VISTA members to recalibrate their timeline and objectives during the course of their initial check-in meetings. By disclosing the information beforehand, VISTA projects can anticipate their mid-year and the end-of-year report for the Regional AmeriCorps office. It's really important to acknowledge that our form is not perfect by any means, but we are proactively seeking input each year from our members to be more intentional in the design. Um, so we can ensure that the collection tracker um, is user-friendly, accessible, and continues to meet the needs of, of our members. Um, so to further capture that insightful narratives from our, the VISTAS projects, we've placed text boxes throughout the forms that's geared towards collecting great stories, the accomplishments, um, any attachments that they, they would like to share with us at any point of the project. And upon gathering all of the members' information for the reporting season, we're able to provide that feedback with clarity. Uh, we can ask for revisions um, and we can determine areas for more project support and potential VAD discussions. The information is then synthesized into one document by our team, which is then sent over to the regional portfolio officer as a supplement to the report and e-grants. So we've noticed that the exposure of various macro programming platforms such as Excel, it allows our VISTAs to learn hard skills that can be transferred in professional roles beyond the VISTA. 
We believe that this also serves as a self-empowerment module because it gives members the tools necessary to feel confident in themselves and towards their VISTA project. Um, next, I'd like to discuss about the how our organization incorporated DocuSign as our online platform for a fast and reliable and also key affordable way to collect member timesheets. So previously, the monthly timesheets were collected when they were in the office, uh, during physical meetings with their site supervisors. Uh, but since COVID, many of our members encountered many obstacles in the workplace, um, such as needing to work remotely, lack of access to printing, and a lot of back and forth email chains that just created confusion. So one of the steps that we took to alleviate the stress from our members was to purchase DocuSign through TechSoup. It's a global nonprofit um, that provides technical and uh, technological tools for other nonprofits. So DocuSign makes the creating of any style forms a simple uh, way to share multiple forms to multiple recipients at much faster and hassle-free. Our members have uh, really voiced how much easier it's been for them to complete the forms in a timely manner um, and also to send the paperwork back to us uh, without much of a stress on them. Um, so we're really proud about that. Um, anything that we can remove that, uh, the additional work on their already consumed plates is uh, always great for us. Um, as an organization that's used to uh, filing cabinets and printing a lot of documents in the office for storage, uh, we've begun to convert many of our existing documents, such as our onboarding forms, host site recruitment agreement forms, quarterly check-in forms, um, into a template for DocuSign, where then it's more of a streamlined process that can be safely stored in our online portal, and it reduces the cost of our office supplies, so it's a win-win. Um, the other piece is that, you know, with ongoing assessment, we take much pride in our members and their VISTA projects. So it's really important to recognize the challenges that occur throughout the service term. We make it a priority to capture voices from our VISTAs, their site supervisors, and community stakeholders through a Google Needs Assessment at the beginning, mid-year, and end of the year of the program. So the strategy allows us to provide individualized project support that meets a specific, uh, specific need at the specific time frame. Our VISTA leader, Mary, has done a phenomenal job reminding our members of submission timelines, uh, professional development opportunities in their communities, and applying to local resources such as SNAP and mental health services. So Mary will then report back to our team about the conversations that she's had with the members um, so we can provide more of a follow-up with very specific assistance if needed. Um, and you know, the large landscape of our VISTA projects, we remain up to date by keeping member notes in our master sheet for tracking purposes. Um, so it's kind of a twofold effect. The master sheet holds the vital information of VISTA members that can provide a quick glance or in-depth information as needed. Um, so it really depends on your needs. Uh, but for our purposes, it holds multiple files um, that uh, has members' personal information, such as food allergies, emergency contact information. Uh, we can see who submitted their timesheet and who has not. Uh, we can also see project notes, uh, their current email to, you know, do a quick uh, contact here and there, uh, payroll information, end of the year service options. So we really try to get all the information beforehand um, so we can really feel up to date with everything. This year, we've added a contingency plan to our file to better monitor sites in preparation of COVID-19. So we know who the secondary point of contact at the host site is or at the community partner's office. We can place special notes that uh, capture the sites that might outline potential issues, um, such as you know, project concerns for a VISTA member, for housing, meals, uh, maybe changes uh, with their site supervisors, um, any additional resource that the VISTA would need to work remotely. So we wanna be as proactive as possible. So this approach really solidifies our team's communication style, our interconnectedness, and our commitment to our members to ensure they can continue the mission of AmeriCorps VISTA in their respective communities. Thank you very much, Lucio. That was very thorough and we appreciate that. So Thank to you. everyone on the webinar, you know the drill related to reporting. What other support can you provide around reporting that wasn't mentioned? I've seen quite a few comments in the chat and it looks like people are posting to all panelists and attendees, but any other thoughts you have around support that you can provide around reporting? All right, so a couple of folks talked about um, using Google Forms and Google Sheets, uh, Google Suite. Uh, Uh, let's see. Um, 
Shannon had commented about whether anyone had used Encore for timesheets. Um, uh, Anthony mentions Qualtrics, I guess, as another uh, possible resource for tracking and maintaining records. Uh, let's see, Paul says that uh, their Vista leader created a really useful at-a-glance spreadsheet uh, that helps Paul see when Vistas turn in their timesheets and their monthly reporting uh, so that he can make sure we have them and follow up if needed. Great, and uh, Angela uses T-sheets to track timesheets. Yeah, it looks like a lot of uh, a lot of folks here talking about how they um, specific um, spreadsheets or timesheets that they're using. Okay, well keep keep posting in there. Um, we've got just a little bit more to cover, and we want to um, have a little time for questions. So we've got one more area, uh, and that is the area of project sustainability. So first, leaders can help train members on record keeping. Um, share with them what they need to be keeping track of throughout their service so that they can collect and organize it for the next VISTA. Um, also, leaders can guide members in creating a sustainability binder, um, putting together other resources to help ensure the smooth transition, um, or to guide the organization in continuing the work of the project after the VISTAs are gone. And finally, leaders can have a role in identifying and obtaining sources of support for the VISTA project that could include funding and partnerships that could support more than one VISTA's work. And though leaders can support project sustainability, sorry, I have trouble saying that word, um, they're not the ones responsible for it. That, of course, is the realm of the sponsor and the project director to ensure that the work will continue after the VISTAs are gone. All right, so that's the last of our five ways. So we'll take a quick minute to uh, look at what we've just covered. We looked at roles for VISTA leaders and supervisors in the areas of recruitment, member support, member training and development, reporting, and sustainability. And along the way, we heard ex specific examples from our guest speakers as well as from many of our participants. So I want to point out a few resources that might be useful. Um, some of these were already mentioned. Uh, the first two um, were shared by our guest speakers. First is the delegation worksheet, the MOCA, that Claire mentioned. And next is a personal wellness handbook that Mary Sherman created for her VISTAs at Campus Compact of New York in Pennsylvania. And then we have three resources that are available on the VISTA campus, including uh, the AmeriCorps VISTA member recruitment page. We've got a document that compares the roles of VISTA leaders and supervisors, and a presentation for training your members on how to organize a sustainability binder. Links to all of these are included in the handout for the session. And thank you, Mike, for posting the link there in the chat. So now we're at the end of the formal presentation, but before we dive into the questions you've asked and more that you might have coming on the way, I do want to invite you to complete a short evaluation of today's webinar. We read every one of them, and if you have any ideas for future topics, we would love to hear them. The survey will appear in your browser window once you exit the Zoom session, and you can also find the link to the evaluation in the chat panel now. So again, if you have any questions at this time, please go ahead and type them in the chat. And if you don't see them in the chat panel, you can move your cursor to the bottom of the screen and click the chat icon. So the first question we have, Andy, uh, goes to you. You get the prize for the first question. Hmm. It relates back to your conversation around VISTA leaders and eGrants. And the question is, what login do VISTA leaders use to track info in eGrants? Uh, great question. So VISTA leaders can uh, create their own account in eGrants, and the eGrants administrator for their organization can assign them the proper roles. And off the top of my head, I'm not going to say the names of the roles correctly, um, 
but they're but they're very basic. And there is a, a sort of a one pager or maybe a two pager on the Vista campus that outlines um, the roles for for Vista leaders and eGrants. You can find it on the starting leader service page of the campus. Um, but basically, it's uh, it's it's mostly a read only role. Um, and Eric, I don't know if you remember the names of those roles any better than I, but um, not off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. There's so many different ones that I don't want to misspeak. Um, but uh, but the uh, the resource is there. Great. Thank you. And, and Andy, another quick question. It's an easy answer is, will the information in the chat be shared with the attendees at any point? People mentioned there were a lot of good resources and ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I So I will um, sort of uh, clean up the chat uh, after the session. I'll post it on the same page where those other handouts are. Um, and uh, so we'll just add it there so you'll be able to access it um, very easily. And the next question, I'll, I'll turn to Hannah and um, sorry, my brain is losing my mind. Um, <laughs> Claire and Hannah, or thank you, Claire and Hannah. Yes. Uh, and so there are lots of comments about needing resources, free resources for sites without budgets. And I know some of you mentioned some things that you either came up with or had done before. They weren't sure if, if you knew of any other resources other than Excel that could help with capturing data. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, happy to, we, we don't, uh, our program doesn't pay for any of our resources we use to do timesheets and reporting. Um, we use Google Suite. Um, so using a Google form for submitting monthly reports. Um, and then we set up some pretty um, extensively formatted spreadsheets for each Vista to submit their time in so they can keep track of it themselves. Um, I think other Canva's been mentioned a lot on here. I just want to put in another shout out for Canva. And then Hannah, I didn't know if there's anything else you've used that's been useful. Um, yeah, so one of our Vista leaders is really good with Excel. So he's been doing some cool stuff with Google Sheets. Um, but yeah, generally we stay in the Google Drive area. Great. Thank you. And Andy, the, the second part of that question was specifically about performance measures. I know there's a lot of information about performance measures on the Vista campus that people can Google to find. Um, what needs to be tracked in terms of performance measures and different ways to track it. Any other ideas you have specifically to the performance measure piece? Um, not really, not, not other than what folks have shared about, you know, online spreadsheets, smart sheets and Google Sheets and the rest. Um, I think it's really just a matter of looking at the performance measures that your project will be reporting on and creating your own tracker um, so that you can what you need. I might have the time to answer. Um, this one, Andy, is for you and I. It's a question about will there be a separate session for new VISTA sites and new supervisors? And is there a link for eGrants for supervisors? So I'll, I'll start and then I'll pass it over to you. There is quite a bit of, quite a bit of information about eGrants and how to use it and um, ways to access eGrants. The easiest way to find it is on the Vista campus. Go to the search field and just type in eGrants and you'll find a lot of information there. In terms of a session for new Vista sites and new supervisors, there will be a session, I don't exactly know the month, but in a couple of months there will be a session for site supervisors, a, a monthly Vista webinar. So stay tuned for that. Andy, what other thoughts do you have about that question? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think you've covered it there, Eric. Um, there's there's so much in the supervisor section on the campus, um, and certainly um, a lot of uh, resources on using eGrants. Okay. Uh, quickly going back to 
to Claire and Hannah, there was a, a question, where do I find the wellness handbook? I believe you posted a link in the chat earlier, but someone was asking where they can find it. Yeah, it's it's um, it's listed in the handout. Um, that's, uh, uh, it's on the page with all the resources for this session. Um, and, and I'll ask Mike if he can just paste that link one more time. And then um, I think I think we should probably wrap up. We're a couple minutes after the top of the hour, and we know all of your time is really important. Um, so thank you for those questions and for all the participation in the session. Definitely. And with that, we do want to mention that next month's webinar for VISTA leaders is on supporting VISTA member well-being. That'll take place on Thursday, December 10th, and we certainly hope to see you there. I do sincerely want to thank our guest speakers, Lucio Perez and Mary Sherman from Campus Compact of New York and Pennsylvania, and Claire Healy and Hannah Kim from SUR Philadelphia. Also, thank you to our production team, Mike Dietz and Kim Adams at LSI, and of course, my colleague, Andy King. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon.